What is up, So Hills Kids? We are back, and it is me, and I am excited to be with you guys once again. I was gone for like a week and a half, but I am back. I'm here. I hope you liked the video last week with me and Andrew, and this week we are jumping into the final Sunday of May. A lot of you guys might have finished up school already. Maybe you're jumping into your first week of summer or second uh, but either way, we're here, we're finishing up May, we're gonna jump into June, it's gonna be summer, it's gonna be great, I am so excited, you guys. We've got a ton of things to do in the summer, and we'd love to see you back, and watching online is great, so I'm glad that you guys are here. Today, we are jumping into the last part of our series, right, and we've been talking about ways that we can, um, surround our lives with things with God, right, and so today we are talking about actually living for God. God. So we've got an awesome story coming up that revolves around that. First, we've always got our game. We're never going to forget to have fun. So I'm going to see you guys after the game, and we'll jump in. Let's jump into today's story. So here's the thing is, is, is living is kind of hard if you haven't learned yet. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of priorities, a lot of different uh, things we have to do. Maybe for you at school and you have to do some chores every weekend uh, and you've got athletics so you have to practice, right? And so there's things in our lives. But we've got to prioritize those, right? School is a lot more important than video games. So here's the question. What is most important to you guys? If you were to make a list and list out the most important things, what would you do? Maybe family is your most important. Uh, maybe school and academics is really high up there. Sports can be up there. Um, video games can be up there. I like playing video games. It's okay to, to kind of enjoy that as well, right? But here's the real question. Is where is God on that list? Where is God on your list of most important things? And here's the thing. We kind of know the answer. We know we should say, he's the first, he's the first. God is the first on my list. And that's what I would say too. But the question is, do we live it out? Do we live out the fact that God is really the first in our life? Because here's the thing. That's really hard. God wants us to do hard things. 
And so we're going to dive into what it looks like to really have God as our first priority. So we've got an awesome Bible story, an awesome lesson to go along with that. So we're going to jump into this month's Bible verse for the last time. Give it up for Haley. Let's jump into it. Hey you guys, it's Haley and I am back for the month of May with a brand new memory verse. So this month we are going to be in 1 Timothy 4, 8. So let's go ahead and start going over the new motions. First part is training the body. So we're going to be running and training like we're running for, or we're getting ready to run a marathon. So training the body has some value. We're going to make two okay signs and then we're going to put our circles together and then we're just going to keep tapping them together. So that's value and sign language. So training the body has some value. That's the first part. Second part is, but being godly, just put your hands together like you're praying, but being godly has value. We're going to make our value sign again. So being godly has value in every way. Just point everywhere around. So, training the body has some value, but being godly has value in every way. All right, next part is it promises. We're going to make our pinky promise again. It promises help. So, we got that. It promises help for the life we are now living. Just point to yourself twice. For the life we are now living and the life to come. Just move your arms from the back forwards. All right, so that's in 1 Timothy 4, 8. All right, so now we're going to push it all together. So, training the body has some value, but being godly has value in every way. It promises help to the life you are now living and the life to come. 1 Timothy 4, 8. Great job, you guys. See you later. All right, guys. So we're jumping in to the story. Thank you, Haley, for that. That was pretty great. I'm so glad. I hope you guys took time to learn that uh, first. That's super great. We're jumping into a new one next week. I'm excited about that one as well. So we're going to look at the Bible lesson today. And the lesson is found in the Gospel of Mark. So it's the second book in the Bible, Matthew and then Mark. We're going to be in chapter 12. So 12th chapter of Mark, second book in the New Testament. Flip over there if you've got your Bible. Go find one if you don't. Pause it if you need to, but go get your Bible, and let's jump in. We're going to be jumping around into two sections here. So we're going to look at the first one, and then we're going to look at the second one, okay? And so first one is going to be in verses 13 through 17, and I am going to read that. And it says, Later, the leaders sent some Pharisees and supporters of Herod to trap Jesus into saying something for which he would be arrested. Teacher, they said, we know how honest you are. You're impartial and don't play favorites. You teach the way of God truthfully. Now tell us, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? So this is kind of big. Because if you remember, the Romans weren't nice to Israel. And so paying taxes to Rome would kind of be like saying, well, I'm going to give my lunch money to my bully on purpose. So let's dive in and keep reading. Should we pay them or should we not? Jesus saw through their hypocrisies and said, Why are you trying to trap me? Show me a Roman coin and I'll tell you. And when they handed it to him, he asked, Whose picture and title are stamped on it? Caesar, they replied. Well then, Jesus said, Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. So here's the thing. These Pharisees, they weren't very nice. And they wanted to trap Jesus so they could arrest him, put him in jail, and get rid of him, right? He's an issue. He's causing issues for the Pharisees. But Jesus sees right through. And he says, who's on the coin, right? Just like we have maybe George Washington or Abraham Lincoln on one of our coins. Well, they had Caesar Augustus stamped on the coin. And so Jesus said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Which is basically saying, money, it doesn't matter. Money belongs in the world. But if we're going to follow Jesus, if we want Jesus as our priority, we need to look at something different. And what's that something different? Well, in a few chapters down, if you look at Mark verses, or chapter 12, verses 38 through 40, we see a whole different story when it comes to money. So let's look at that. So we're going to be in verses 38, and it says, Jesus taught them, 
Beware of these teachers of the religious law, for they like to parade around in flowing robes and receive respectful greetings as they walk in the marketplace, and how they love the seats of honor in the synagogues and the head of table at the banquet. So, you see, Jesus is kind of comparing them to, to the money of the world. They like what the world gives them. They like the praise. They like being the center of attention and everybody telling them how great they are. But Jesus follows this up with a story. He wants to, he wants to look at it in a different perspective. So in verses 41, it says, Jesus sat down near the collection box in the temple and watched as the crowd dropped in money. Many rich people put in large amounts. Then a poor widow came and dropped in two small coins. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has given more than all the others who are making contributions, for they gave a tiny part of their surplus. But she, poor as she is, has given everything she lived on. So this whole thing is talking about money. In reality, it's talking about our possessions, what we prioritize in the world. So some of us prioritize money. Maybe we prioritize sports or academics or people liking us. But here's the thing. When we try and make those our life, it's not going to work. You see, the widow came in and she gave her priority, right? That money, those two pennies, that's all that she had to live on. Maybe she could buy a loaf of bread for the week. Maybe just a little bit of food to make it through until the next time she could get some money. But she gave it to the Lord because she had Jesus as her priority. So we're going to dive into that. What does it really mean to give ourselves up to the Lord? What does that look like? We're going to worship the song and then we're going to jump into what that looks like. Okay, I'll see you over there. In my wrestling and in my doubts in my failures you won't walk out your great love will lead me through you are my peace in my troubled sea oh you are my peace in the troubled sea in the silence you won't let go in my questions your truth will hold your great love will lead me through you are my peace in the troubled sea oh you are my peace in the troubled sea my lighthouse my lighthouse shining in the darkness i'll follow you my tomorrow brings with each morning i'll rise and sing my god's love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea oh you are the peace in my troubled sea my lighthouse my lighthouse shining Say 
Wow, that was some great worship. Now, you hear the word worship, and you might think singing a song, right? We worship on Sunday mornings if we're at 4, 5, 6, or All Stars by singing a song. Maybe your parents worship in big church, or you worship during the song there. But here's the thing. Worship doesn't just mean singing. Worship is everything we do in our lives that brings glory to God, okay? So... Taking out the trash, that can be worship. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Doing your chores can be worship. Homework can be worship. Everything we do can be worship. So what does that have to do with you? Well, when we're talking about giving our whole life to God, we're talking about living a life of worship constantly. Right? When the widow dropped those two coins into the jar, she was worshiping God by giving what she had to glorify God him. So in your life, whether you're at school or out for the summer and hanging out with friends, maybe you're doing sports uh, or academic teams or whatever you're doing, you can worship God. You can live for God. You cannot focus on the things of this world like money uh, or fame or popularity or being the best at a sport, but what you can do is live for God. So I want to challenge you guys. I want you to really think this week, how can you, at your house, with your friends, playing during the summer and having a great time, how can you live for God? That is the last lesson for this month. We're going to jump into the month of June next week. I cannot wait to see you guys there. With that, I'll see you guys next Sunday. Later!